So you said that you would like to leave the castle. You're walking yeah, through the castle gates, past uh, the portcullis, uh, and you're I'll about to go down. Perception test, real quick. Oh, yep, yeah. uh, twenty. Hey. You rolled it okay. You yep. rolled a twenty. Okay. Well, you in the distance, uh, past the mist, you see a black dragon oh. walking up towards the castle. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna sneak past that black black dragon. Uh, all right, okay. okay well, we give me give me a stealth check. Oh. Oh. oh wow. Oh, yeah. I rolled off the book. <laughs> it was five anyway. No, no, for I all understand, the book. understand. Okay, here we go. Big money. Oh, hey, look at that. 18. But it ro- 18, right? That's what I need. They're past perceptions. It's really yeah, small, yeah. Right? So you sneak out into the night and you don't think the dragon sees you. All right. Mm-hmm. What do you plan on doing now? Well, I got that I got that new spell from last time, right? That uh-huh. dragon killing spell. And uh-huh. I, you know, we, okay. Yeah, I mean, I got rid of the house rule on not sneaking attack. Yeah, not sneaking attack. Okay. Yeah, and we're still doing the sneak attack with non-damage spells, you know, like okay. All right. All right. Here Trying we go. to open up. Yep. Uh-huh. <clears throat> All right. Request. Boom. Nat 20. But it's what? It, there, there's a problem here, Jim. I mean, a problem. The, let's talk about problem players. The only problem here is that you won't let me play the game the way I want to play. Let's talk about problem players on WebDM. This episode is sponsored by Guile and Design, makers of spell books for all of your 5e and TTRPG reference cards. Using cards is one of the best ways to keep track of your spells, items, or martial abilities. And these are an easy and cool looking way to keep up to 60 per book together. Plus, each book comes with built-in bookmarks to keep everything organized. Comes in Black Dragon with silver or gold accents and Red Dragon styles with more new designs on the way. Best of all, you can get them on Amazon. They ship in one to two days and they're the perfect gift for your gamer friend who has everything. Check them out. Link in the comment and the description. All right, Jim. Yo. Let's talk about problem players. Well, no, no, no. I'm going to stop right there. Is it wise to call it problem players, or are these just problem behaviors oh, yeah. that players participate in? Oh, certainly, right? Like, right? I, I, yeah, yeah. Problem players is, uh, I, I feel like it's a pernicious sort of way of thinking about it. It kind of like casts, um, you know, someone at your table who has a disruptive play style or just is a mismatch as like the problem with them as a person. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're <laughs> labeling them as such, therefore it becomes an us versus, like an us versus them. You're, you're drawing battle lines there when it's just kind of like, yeah. hey, you know that thing that you do at certain points? Like, we want to talk about it. Yeah, right? yeah, and I get it. You know, it can feel that way. It can certainly feel like it's battle lines and it can certainly feel very personal. And mm-hmm. that's sort of the trick with RPGs is that they are very uh, personal experience. And, and for even like your beer and pretzels kick down the door, kind of D&D style games, like you can get attached to your characters, you can get attached to certain, you know, how certain rules play out or house rules or something, like you might not even realize what's gonna trip you up. Yeah. Um, so like you, you can get in these situations where like someone else at the table is doing something that's like really throwing you off your game, grading on you, bothering you, stepping over boundaries or, or something. Uh, we are not talking about like abusive behaviors here. We're not mental mm-hmm. health professionals. <laughs> uh, oh, you know, they, yeah. we're talking about uh, an order of magnitude lower than things like you know emotional or physical abuse. This would just be disruptive uh, behaviors, things that some players do, or, or or like habits that some players pick up that get talked about as as sort of the, you know problems that need to be addressed and things like mm-hmm. that. Where. Um, I'm not sure that it's it needs to be that uh, you know hard line, yeah, but yeah. there's a lot going on. There's a this is a big messy complex problem, right? And well, it's often life, not talked about. right? Yeah, it's life. I mean, we all have to interact, and everybody wants to come to the table with their own like idea, but trying to make that meld and mesh together. Yeah, yeah. sometimes there can be some friction. Certainly, so, yeah. So. Who is the onus on to correct these? Like, like, is it just the DM, or does the entire table need to be involved? And also, like, where can a DM like find the information on how to do this? <laughs> Other than obviously watching our video <laughs> right so now, but before now, like, we're yeah. having to make a video for a reason. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, so player styles have a bit more. Um, you know, resources out there for DMs and other players than say, you know, DMing styles. And and this this video, I guess, is kind of a companion piece to what we did earlier about, uh, you know, problem DMs, issues between player and DM. Um, that one's, you know, a lot of the things we say there uh, apply to this as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for most of like RPGs, kind of just the history of them, 
there hasn't really been a, a, a big concerted effort to like create better game facilitators yeah. and to like create certain type of player or certain type of player behaviors that are conducive to the game, right? So an example of this would be like, in some older versions of Dungeons and Dragons, it's, it's just such a different play style that if you came with some of the more modern, um, you know, like attachment to the character, this is about my character and their relationships with the party and the world and NPCs, it's very character-centric and, and driven, yep. very satisfying to play, but very different <laughs> in terms of mindset and attitude and behavior uh, than an old school dungeon crawl where you can have a significant amount of investment, but it might be easier if you didn't until you have a, some characters that survive for a while. Kind of the, the old style of, of, of child rearing where you know you don't name them until they're five. <laughs> Maybe don't name your your first edition character till they're fifth level. Oh sure, or name they, level, right? That could be a very fun way of playing. I and, and I think it like it highlights that using the examples of sort of sort of like this is how people used to play, this was the culture of play uh, back then, it changed a lot, right? Like what we know about the culture of play in, say, the early years of role-playing hobby is different from, like, even just a few years later when it became more and more popular and more and more people outside of a hardcore group of war gamers are playing this thing. I've struggled to sort of, like, see it. Where has there ever been an effort to say, like, okay, let's try to deliberately, either through some sort of rule book or something, make for better uh, game masters and make for players who play better? And I think part of the problem is is there's so many different goals and... Uh, reasons why you would play, it'd be difficult to like codify all of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're talking about the diversity of, of all mankind. And sure. The, and, and the possibilities of all of it. Sure. And it really highlights the, you know, the fact that uh, the difficulty here is that this is a, so much for so long was decentralized and you learned how to DM uh -huh. through watching someone else at your table do it. Maybe an older sibling, maybe you played with a friend's group and, mm -hmm. and they had someone that DM'd. You know, you, you maybe you take turns, uh, or you took turns, and like some people gravitated towards it, and, and others didn't. And yeah. even though there's sort of like attempts to give you procedures, and here's how you create worlds, and here's how you run dungeons, uh, a lot of the advice for like dealing with intrapersonal conflict, which is a social game, it's going to happen. It's just bad. Either, yeah. either the advice was bad, or or it was unacknowledged. Sometimes you get admissions that like, hey, you need to like take a player aside and talk to them, but more often than not, you get things like punishing them with in-game uh, consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, I'm trying to imagine a, a play culture where that is the, you know, part of the you know, social opprobrium, <laughs> you know, being a disruptive player of like, yeah, if you, you know, if you're doing these things that are upsetting everybody, well, you know, you can still play with us, it's just your character's gonna suffer consequences. And I can see for a certain type of player that might be enough motivation to like, not do those things, mm -hmm. but there's something about it where you're not really getting to the heart of the matter. No, you know? punishing players' characters yeah. um, for their misbehavior yeah. um, to me is is not really uh, the way to go yeah. because in certain contexts, maybe that behavior isn't like that bad. Because sure. maybe you have a DM who doesn't like the rules lawyer guy sure. who decided to play the lore bard right. uh, who, was, who was a lawyer basically, right? I mean, right. they just went full tilt boogie. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. I would do in my early sure. days if 5th edition came out back when I first started. Sure, yeah. Um, because, I mean, that's who I was yeah. at the table. Yeah. Which, you know, it, rules lawyer is okay because you know all the rules, but when you start squeezing every little bit and you're yeah. that person that's like, but the rules say. But the rules, but the rules, say, the rules we start, say. We start interrupting the yeah. game. We start right? stepping on others' toes. Yeah. And like, I, I'm thinking of, of things like that. I'm thinking of things like the classic thief versus paladin arguments oh, that yeah. you would get where, oh, yeah. okay, my thief is pickpocketing and stealing and things like that. Well, my paladin has in game, like if I let you get away with this, I lose, I'm just a crappy fighter. You know, and, right. and you're setting, you're that's a accomplice. situation, <laughs> right? And so you either do the lawful stupid where you count, I'm gonna turn my eyes and uh -huh. I don't know what's going on. It, it just lacks weight and, and, and you keep that up, you're, yeah. it's gonna be a joke, you know? But at the same time, like, where is the burden on the thief player to be like, yeah, I'm not gonna deliberately do things that are going to, you know, jeopardize the play experience of my fellow player, even if my character would do that, mm -hmm. even if this, you know, self-serving, selfish thief would potentially crap where they eat, <laughs> you know, from stealing from the party. And like, I can see why when I when I read about sort of the, the play culture that came out of this, where 
you know, you're getting a bunch of people together and they're, they're taking on the role of individual soldiers in, in these, mil, you know, these mercenary companies. And there's like, we'll use a map of the Netherlands and, you know, put a castle here and we'll give it some silly names. And, and in, in the, those early days, it's, it, there's a lot of PVP. You're, you know, they're war gamers, right? They're mm-hmm. constantly fighting against each other. That's where the DM comes from, the neutral arbiter, the referee between these two players. Right. And so that play culture and style might have just had a greater tolerance and expectation of PvP behaviors and an expectation that, yeah, you're, you're, you are out in this for yourself and if you can pull yeah. one over on another player, then, you know, great. And a modern example of this is a game Torchbearer. Torchbearer is, is designed to sort of simulate an old school dungeon crawl experience but it has like rule support for your character being made miserable and hungry and and just like wretched and the whole point is that you're these people on the fringes of society that have to go in these dangerous hell holes for some reason mine was paying off a debt to a mob boss and i had a goal for myself acquire a certain magic item a certain x amount of loot you know Mm -hmm. to pay off my debt i'd acquired a magic item that got me three-fifths of the way there and another player goes i want that item and there are rules to facilitate a confrontation between two PCs. And as it was happening, I was kind of like, this is not something that would happen in D&D. Like in D&D, this might be a confrontation between both the players. There's not really a lot of rules for like how you adjudicate one character convincing another character to give them something. Like that's usually sort of handled from a metagame, like I'll trade you these things or whatever. Right, right. And in Torchbearer here, I was sitting there playing it like, I'm not, I don't want this. I want to keep that magic item. Like, that's really awesome. But at the same time, I'm like, this is an outcome that would never happen. And in that sense, I like it better than the fact that I didn't get to keep my magic item. You know, yeah. there was a whole other, you know, backstabbing later on. And, you know, mm-hmm. like, I paid off enough of my debt that my character wasn't murdered uh, yeah. at the end. It's amazing to me because we used to have some altercations. Yes. Uh, yeah. Some of them were like, you know, we it was the normal. Yeah. The thief and the whatever. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it was, I mean, I know uh, it wasn't a game that I was in, but I remember uh, the story of the TPK because somebody shot uh, a dwarf in the back. Oh, yeah. Uh, just because they were pissed off at him, yeah, and then they start. Everybody just started fighting. Everybody just and started the whole fighting. Party yeah. just wiped itself. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'm just like, you know, guys. Uh, yeah, wrestlers, wrestlers. Yeah, <laughs> fight each other all the time, and they're actually hitting each other. Sure, but you know what? They stick to the script. They sure. stick to the narrative yeah. structure. Yeah, yeah. And they're and there for the. They day. can actually just do it and have fun. <laughs> and I'm just like, I just don't understand. Like, I love PvP. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's very satisfying. Like, when like, it's, yeah. like straight up fighting. Like I, I was on a on a game on the on Grimjack's channel. Yeah, where we did Highlander, uh-huh. and uh-huh. that's literally just PvP. Yeah, and and we all had an amazing time, and yeah. like being able to like monologue and role play and go through that, and it's just like I, I can just imagine like I, I would. Every every match or whatever, I would just think back to that TPK white thing, yeah. and I'm just like, but, and that's see, that's most people's experiences. I imagine is mm-hmm. that that their experiences with PVP moments come when their emotions are charged. Yeah. There's a misinterpretation. People's goals for play are not explicitly, if they even know them, they're not explicitly stated. Mm-hmm. So everybody's talking past each other. One DM's arguing about this rule interpretation, whereas the player is arguing from a place of like fiction, like the, the, the fictional outcome of this thing is not satisfying, but maybe nobody can articulate that. And if you throw in the mix that they're potentially immature players, you know, they're you know, young, don't have a lot of experience, you, you have a recipe for just a lot of uh, wounded feelings, uh, mm-hmm. you know, broken friendships, bad experiences, and then therefore bad expectations. And so you can see how all of these behaviors start to become like, you never do this, never PVP, never do that, you know, never split the party, never uh, mm-hmm. do whatever, you know, players, you're always, you always have to bite the hook, you know, yeah. you know, always, you know, accept what the DM offers and that's not fun yeah. either you know that's not no. why we play either no and, not at all and i'm sorry i'm gonna say it right now always split the party that's always, fun yeah. happens yeah, that's that, where yeah. the narrative like watch every movie sure, they yeah. always split up and then crazy shit happens crazy. sort of a thorny messy just kind of gray area because i i don't think these are qualities or traits of particular gamers i don't think particular games you know you know breed these kind of traits in people mm-hmm. these are like mismatched play styles we don't necessarily know what we want out of the game or I'm having a bad day and yeah. I'm just not with it. That's that's another reason why I feel like uh, ascribing these things to problem players is is just a, 
you know, not particularly helpful because what if it is like a bad day? What if you've got a player who's just, they've had a terrible week, they're not feeling it, they're, you know, they're not being as uh, sensitive to how their actions impact others or, or whatever, they're not their usual self. And you wouldn't wanna have like a, a framework in place for addressing that that casts them as, you know, who they are as the issue. It's more just like, hey, are you, are you doing all right? Like, do you need to take this week off? Or, mm -hmm. or like, do we just need to like forget about the game and, and like throw some orcs on the table and have a big battle? Yeah. Like there's, there's like, like, that was your kind of thing. For years, it was clear mm -hmm. on the weeks we didn't have big fights that there was something you were not getting out of the game. You could tolerate that for a little bit. Yeah, but no, I, you know that was my impression at least. And no, no, it, no, it totally was. Like in in the beginning, like I, you know, like some people, I used D and D as as an escape or as a, as, as a catharsis. Yeah, right. It was just I had a shitty week at work. But mm -hmm. This weekend, all those problems are getting splattered on orc faces, and then it's followed by my sword. Yes. Right? Yeah. And you know, I don't really do that as much anymore, right. just because I really like story. I'm, I'm running a game now where there's. You know, there's not really that much combat at all. It's Certainly. more just intrigue and talking people down. And yeah. that's fun because it's it's still conflict. Right, right. There's still the chance of violence. Yeah. But but being able to walk it back from that precipice is is I think is more interesting Certainly, than yeah. just kick down the door and start <laughs> slashing shit. Like I was that player for the longest time and it yeah, I seemed disinterested in some role playing aspects where mm, I'm just mm. like, Yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, what, yeah. But you know, I don't know. I, I I tried not to make it everyone else's problem. Certainly. And I wouldn't I'd say from a DM perspective, I don't think it ever it was noticeable but from other players but never like a problem. It would, it, and from my p point of view, it was one of those things where I, it just was a helpful checklist. And I would know like, is Pruitt seeming to check out? Or does Pruitt seem impatient? Mm -hmm. Well, how many, when was the last time we threw down? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when was, and not just like a little, you know, worth nothing, uh, inconsequential yeah, you don't sort even of. put minis on the table. Well, we don't even put minis on the table. I'm talking like, we have a setup, we got the tiles out, yeah, yeah. you know, the markers, the whole shebang. And I, that helped me pace the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've said in our DM uh, Styles episode, like, you don't have to have everybody on the same page play style wise. You can have power gamers, min maxers, role players, whatever terminology you want to use, all playing together. And the DM can kind of like orchestrate that. And for me, I just had a three session check in. Every three sessions, what have I covered? What's happened in the last three sessions? Have we had some RP? Have we uh, added new information to the game? And has there been action? And I know for myself, if every three sessions there's, we're not hitting those three things, then I am not going to be in as create a game that's as engaging to my players as mm -hmm. I could. And it helped me create a natural rhythm for the game, avoid problem situations, and you know the like. And I think for a lot of these problems that we'll get into in just a minute, where we list off some specific examples, if you're able to empathize with the person who is being disruptive, if you're able to see like what is it they want out of this experience of play and maybe why they're acting the way they are has a reason, has a logic behind it. It yeah. has a purpose. And it's yeah. not just they're a jerk, they're an asshole, they don't know how to play well with others. Mm -hmm. They might just want different things out of the game. You know, uh, my cat Monk isn't a, generally an asshole, but if I don't pet him enough, he starts knocking <laughs> stuff off. Like, and sure. it's the thing, it's just like, it is a way of kind of getting attention. It is. That is another right? thing, is a way of getting attention, yeah. And it's a, it's sort of like a negative way of getting attention. You don't want to encourage it. Right. Which is why well, you Generally, want to... negative things are more quickly uh, acted upon sure. and uh, more strongly acted upon yeah. before any attention. And, you know, you can see that play out in, uh, you know, if you have players who are not, say, in invested in a hook yeah. and they want to do other things, then they might start doing things to disrupt the hook that you've provided them. And they might start, de you know, this is where they start, you know, you start hearing DMs say, oh, they're derailing. They're not following the story. They're not doing this. And my answer to that is like, well, they're trying to tell you what they want to do. Why are you resisting it? Yeah. You well, know, they're trying to let you know, like they might not be articulate about it. They could better ways they could do it. But yeah. That's the communication. That's te that's the attempt. An example of that, which I'm gonna I'm gonna wrangle in our producer Travis. Yeah. Uh, and and he loves to play thieves. Yes. And just go steal shit. Yeah. The right? solo's thief run. The yeah. solo's th thief run, but just like stealing stuff. Yeah. And early on, I wish we were more mature about it. Well, he never really disrupted the game. Mm -mm, but he was much. usually just kind of checked out. But and there were some players who really were upset by it. They were upset that because they, they thought that he like you don't give a shit about this game. And he's like, yeah. what? I'm here. I'm paying attention. What, do, are we fighting? Do I yeah. need to s steal something? Because yes. he's the thief. Yeah. You know. And 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 I wish that we'd been a little bit more mature about it because yeah. I gave him shit sometimes. I admit, sure, I'll yeah. own up to that. Sorry, Trav. 
Um, it's cool, buddy. And so I never cared. Yeah, you didn't care. Just, you got to play more because you right. do solos all the time, and then and then his character would show up decked out decked in, out in, magic, items. in I don't magic items. I don't know. Did you make the goddess of love fall in love with you? No. <laughs> But it's one of those things where uh, where a player had a particular interest in the game, a different way of looking at it. Yeah. They were still there during the game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and different levels of engagement by players. That's another one we see a lot of from both DMs and other players is how other people are engaging with the game seems to really get under people's skin. Mm-hmm. And I don't, the only advice I have for that, I, that how I solved that for myself when it was a problem for me was to stop caring and... But just trust that this experience of play, mm-hmm. that the magic that happens when you get together and a game just starts working, will draw people in. And if it's not, then it's time in between games to sit with that player, and it could just be that they don't care, that they're perfectly fine to just show up and hang out with their friends and roll some dice and twiddle on their phone, and maybe you just stick them at the other end of the table where they don't bother anybody. Yeah. You know, or you give them permission to get come and go as they please. That's the biggest one for me. A lot of these uh, behaviors can be alleviated if you give the table permission, the player's permission, to come and go from the table as they please. Yeah. Can I get up whenever I want? As, uh, as an ADD haver, you go, you've got to let me stand up and walk around. I will yeah. start being a problem. I'll start stacking dice. I'll start bouncing my legs so hard the entire table, table will shake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Which I knocks just... over the other ADD <laughs> person's <laughs> dice, and then they start PvPing, <laughs> and it's all just a shit show. Yeah. So let's um, go through some like specific examples here and just kind of talk through what okay. the behavior is and everything yeah. else. So I think we should start with the generally labeled types that are okay, sometimes sure. seen as problems. And, and what kinda, are the young? Yeah, and we yeah. kind of went through these in the DM episode, but like yeah. the, the big ones, like the power gamer, the min-maxer, oh, yeah, the yeah. rules lawyer. Sure, yeah. You know, like those are sometimes seen as problems. Which yes. Which I don't like, I'm sorry, like if, you know, if somebody really likes to be good at their... Their, yeah. their character to be good at something. That why is that? I thought you know craftsmanship was a good thing. The divide and sort of split between I am a role player and and a, therefore a superior uh, gamer to the, to the power gamer is sort of like no. First off, they're not opposites. They are they can be complementary. They can be exclusionary. But they're not like. You, they are not in opposition. Right. No, no, I'm, I'm a zero I'm, sum, you know. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I'm with you. And and the the other thing of it is is one of the very things a lot of the you know complaints that you'll see about these sort of play styles is sort of like well yeah but in the complaining and in the sort of grousing about the play style it's not like oh you're doing the same thing they're doing and kind of like you don't have to listen to them but it is kind of like you're doing the same thing they're doing so why should I listen like right. can we is there not a different way to approach this issue mm-hmm. other than these people suck and they should stop mm-hmm. my only problem with that is when you're that player who is maybe shepherding a newer player or sure. someone else and they, you look at their sheet and you're like why didn't you why yeah, didn't why you, didn't you sm- X? Yeah. You know, why didn't you X? Yeah. Why didn't you put that in that? And yeah. It's like you kn- you know that the main stat for a druid is wisdom. Right, right, right. You, right. Know, yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah. Like that's when it becomes a problem. When you start yeah. forcing your style on someone else, that's sure. when the DM should just step in. You know? Sure. Yeah, that's the, the number one, right? Like unasked for advice, unsolicited advice mm-hmm. is just it, I don't know, in my experience it seems to just kind of rub people the wrong way. And while they might not say anything at the moment, and they might not ever say anything, it can contribute to sort of a feeling of, well, I don't know, I can't do this, I'm always going to need help, and then you're two years down the road, you're still looking up stuff for them. I've certainly played with people like that, where it seems like they're never really able to grasp the basics of the game, and then at the same time, every time they play, because the other players who have gotten it are very impatient, they never have a chance to learn. They're never, they're never, they never have a chance to go like, okay, what page is it on again? How do I look it up? Maybe next time I could look it up before I want to do it. They're, they, they are able to kind of check out and then when it uh, mm-hmm. comes to their turn, someone will give it the, you know, the book. And that's a very specific example, but in a lot of these cases, what I find is that there's someone else at the table who's, if it's long-term, and it goes on for a long time, there's someone else at the table who's a, a facilitating or, or betting could be the DM, could be other players, maybe somebody's not speaking up, but communication yeah. is where it starts. What about the absentee player? The absentee player you is... Know, they're there one week and gone the next. It, Every other week, though. <laughs> it's tough. Do you have a lot of these players? Then you need to run a game that accounts for it. You know, like, that's yeah. just the hard truth of it. Maybe a the same group of people every week, or the same group of, you know, party every week is just not going to cut it, and you need to run, like, a troop style where characters come and go and you have episodic adventures 
you know, Mega Dungeons are great for this. Uh, hex Crawls are great for this. Any content where there's like, or any kind of game where there's a, a default play mode, we don't know what we're going to do. That means we go to the dungeon. Right. You know, here's where we left off last time. We cleared this room, cleared this room. We think there's treasure here or whatever. Uh, or, you know, we're mapping up the river, but we could always go up the coast and, and mm -hmm. try that. Or you could use like online uh, adventure generators that'll, that'll sort of create scenarios for you to kind of tease out and add details for. That can work really well for faction-based play in a city, something like that. So yeah, you can deal with them in that way. If you've talked to them and it's a matter of like their work or family, you know, there's life, so, life happens. Life I mean. happens. And how many people like have jobs where they don't know what their schedule is week to week? It changes mm -hmm. constantly and they don't get notice for it until the last minute. It really seems, it really feels unfair to like punish those, uh, punish those players for things that are beyond their control. Now, with all that said, I, you know, I don't think you should punish them, but the question of whether or not they get XP is a, something to talk about because mm -hmm. there are some players who are going to feel like, listen, I would be here if I could. I, I, I want to be here. I don't want to be working or doing whatever, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they feel sort of a, a, that double whammy of you didn't get to play and you're going to fall behind yeah. is too much. In a game like 5th edition, I'm just going to have them keep pace. Did you, it's been five weeks since you played. Well, guess what? You've leveled up twice since then. Are you going to, you know... Yeah, you're off doing other <laughs> stuff. You're off doing other stuff. Let's talk about it. You know, do you need a minute to, to familiarize yourself with a character? Now, you know, I'd probably recommend that that player play a very simple character that can be picked up and put down without a lot of worry, probably not a spellcaster. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they hop two levels because they've been gone a month and now they have to pick ten spells. So. Yeah, it's the same with like the people who are on their cell phones, but they're on their cell phones with their families. You know, they're on their cell phones with people who they need to be on their cell phones with. You know, the person on, uh, you know, online or wherever is saying, you know, I hate cell phones at the table. They've drawn this line in the sand and can't say, well, except for this person who needs to be able to get in touch with so-and-so. And yeah, what if they're on call for their job? Or they're on I mean, call for their job. I mean, yeah. Is, yeah. No, I think cell phone use is one of those things where it's just like, I mean, if they're just phone under the edge of the table texting sure. with, with, the, with the button clicks on silent, yeah. like whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, if they pull their phone up and start having a conversation in the middle of D&D, &D, that's where it becomes a problem. Sure, yeah, definitely. And, and, and this is, like, a lot of these are, you can cover in Session Zero. You can talk about them in Session Zero. If you didn't have a Session Zero where you talked about it, then, like, take some time outside of the game to just sort mm -hmm. of chat. Um, for some of those, uh, you know, um, behaviors, especially, like, the ones we were talking about a minute ago, rules lawyering, metagaming, power gaming, the ones that have a really bad rap, um, and that uh, you know, players may not want to be accused of, like just email the DM if you notice it. We had that one thing where we got disadvantaged on everything, but it, I just kind of noticed that they weren't doing that. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. As a dungeon master, you can say, thanks for the heads up. I'll just do a character audit of everybody's character sheets next time. As mm -hmm. a dungeon master, that's probably something you should be doing at the beginning of every session anyway, just to ref for yourself to refamiliarize what the players can do or what the characters can do. Mm -hmm. It's also a good way of just kind of checking up. Are you doing everything? Is everything on the up and up? Yeah, uh, and to loop it back around to absentee players, it helps because hey, you haven't been here in a while. Let's make sure your character's mm -hmm. up to speed uh, and the like. So, yeah. oh no, d definitely. And uh, thank you for giving me a segue into the next one, which is the um, the the, the add-on player. <laughs> you get to the situation is like, do I have a grappling hook and rope? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Of course they do. They always they, they they've <laughs> got the right spell. They've got the right thing. Uh -huh. I understand where they're coming from. I I have do, engaged in the behavior myself, especially early on when uh, you're preparing spells and you don't want to waste a slot. And you're like, "Yep, I sure do have that second sleep spell." <laughs> yep, I took the tech magic because but, I didn't want to cast it as a ritual. But <laughs> also, a lot of times for me when that happens is that the dungeon master doesn't check in to make sure that I'm ready to play, mm -hmm. that I've selected my spells, that I'm good to go, and. It's, you know, I, I haven't picked my spells yet. Do I have a spell that fits for this situation? Well, I could. I have access to it. Would I have prepared it today? I, I don't know, but it certainly seems like it'd be handy now. Mm -hmm. And so, like, those are situations where, like, personally, I don't care. You, especially if it comes for things that, like, your character's competency would, would have included. Like, yeah, you might have forgotten to, for the rope, but, um, you know, your, would your character have forgotten the rope? Uh, that yeah. kind of thing. If it really bothers you, then then like limit it somehow. Every player can do that three times 
a, a you know a level or or whatever you know or you can burn an inspiration you can burn an inspiration to have that, to have that. yeah yeah, so, yeah. It, it, or you can do it if you're like lose something else out of your backpack you know just mm -hmm. like give them a, a trade off you no, know no I, I I pretty much when it comes to equipment I really agree unless it's like in a very expensive item like you're sure. trying to look at something in the distance oh well, I have a spyglass yeah yeah I'm expensive spell need, component I'm towards spyglass yeah, yeah pretty know? much anything above ten gold I'm, I probably will not yeah just uh, you know but if it's ammunition we assume you stock up unless the game is about counting every bit of weight oh, and every yeah. bit of coin, you know, unless it's that, that kind of game. mode, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> then, then I will. So the ad, one more, you know, oh yeah, I, I yeah, have the, always has the right tool for the job, but then at the same time, I've played with players who are just good at spell, selecting spells and being prepared, and, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of like, seriously, you had that spell prepared? Like, yep, it's right out here on my sheet. I gave yeah. you that sheet at the beginning of the session to tell you what spells I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for me, it's, it's equipment. You've seen my equipment list for my rogues. Yes, it's, I have. What about when, a, when one player steps on another player's goals? Let's say, Jim, for instance, you're going into, say, a fight, maybe against yeah. a big bad. Okay. And yeah. one of the PCs is like, hey, this is my, this is my former boy. Sure, I think yeah. I can save him. We just need to subdue him so I can maybe, like, save him. Yeah, and yeah. And then you're fighting, and uh -huh, you're winning the uh -huh. battle, yep. and you subdue the guy, and then oh, a player yeah. just comes along and kills him yeah yeah that's now a... i mean this is just a random example that i pulled up not really it's meant to be the same as anything that's actually <laughs> happened it didn't get close to home yeah yes still not holding a grudge about that or anything no, no. i've seen it happen multiple times over yes. the years yeah and it has as, uh, most know. of the time it's accidental as no. you alluded to this is a real uh, <laughs> i don't know there have been several times in my role-playing uh sort of like <laughs> days where I've, something has happened when a player's done and i've been so like what? <laughs> really? Like, seriously? That I didn't do what I think I would have done, which is say, like, no, you don't. Like, you know, so you guys see you him moving. You know, straight you, up. I would just straight up. If it's, if, it's a, if it's the climax of a thing, like in this case, we're talking about the end of a 10-level, uh, you know, adventure. We're, we're getting ready to decide whether we want to continue the campaign or end it here. This is a possible, you know, closure for the thing. And then to have this sort of happen in a non-combat situation, right? Like, this is not combat. That You have this character at your mercy. Yeah. I think what I would retcon is the, yeah, you, you, know, you move to strike. You move to bring this enemy down and kill them, but so-and-so stops you. Let everybody else know, yeah, you guys see this character doing this. What do you all do? Mm -hmm. If we need to, we'll roll initiative. Um, I think I would have handled it that way because as it stood, it's just like, wow, okay, I, I guess that happens see y'all next week you know it just yeah. was this weird kind of like Bleh. and we mentioned it on the dm uh, problem dm episodes is like a lot of this advice comes from specifically my own botching and mishandling of a lot of these situations where i've been man this player over here is really making some of my other players creeped out what should i do yeah. you know or like that was a weird moment in the game that felt like a violation of something like that seemed mm -hmm. like it was a real thing you know i remember like calling you back in the house and being like what the hell? Like, you know, I mean, like, or, you know, just to talk through it, and you seem pretty hot. So I was pretty much screaming. <laughs> These situations sneak up on you. Mm -hmm. And there's some of them, like this particular player that did that, I had talked to this player multiple times, and in one on one, the player was, oh, yeah, man, I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, I don't want anybody else at the table to feel like I'm ruining their fun or something, you know, like, oh man, you know, you're, you're the way you use this spell, coupled with this class ability, like, I just don't think these two things were meant to go together as often happened in 3.5, <laughs> you know, so like, let's find a way to address this because like, you're doing a lot of damage as a dusk blade, and like some of the other characters are, you know, they, they feel outshined and, oh, I don't want that at all. Like, I, you know, I want to be a good team player in this. And like, after, for me, after the third time, I should you should have been like, hey man, this doesn't seem like it's it's uh, you know it's working out, and he's not showing up every time. Then those are warning signs, and those are warning signs that in my own sort of you know as the DM, I'd either look at it and go, they're not that big a deal, or um, you know, or we'll just deal with it when it happens. We want to avoid conflict or something. But then you have something like this where we're at the end of a campaign. And it's a moment where you can have a satisfying closure for your character. It could be a very satisfying arc. It worked out kind mm -hmm. of great. Just it's everything fell into place. Mm -hmm. And then at the last minute for it to be kind of pulled out from underneath was very yeah. frustrating. And it was the precipitating event where I was like, you can't come back, man. You're like, <laughs> sorry. I just no more. And, yeah, yeah. and that's one of two people, one of three people that I've had to personally tell you can't come back. It's hard. Yeah. And it is tough. If resolving these kinds of issues were easy, there wouldn't be this 
yeah. right? We wouldn't we wouldn't <laughs> yeah, yeah. answer y'all's questions. There wouldn't be you know all kinds of guidebooks and 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 everything about how to deal with these things. It's easy to diagnose a problem uh, play style or mm -hmm. disruptive player. It's much harder to address it. You know, yeah. it's much harder to address. Kind of taking a step back from like the the grievous way of discounting plans, but the the Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Yes. The party's sitting around, yeah, the they're sabotager. making their plan, they're right outside the, the cave, and they're like, all right, there's two guards, all right, you're going to go over here, whatever here, and then Leroy Jenkins just busts right through. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the barbarian, the impatient barbarian, the, and I, uh, you know, sure. In all honesty, yeah. I've been this person. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've been, so have I. Uh, I you know, or, or the opposite of it, you know, the person who's just like, uh, you know, they, they want to take their time with one thing, and they're the only one that sort of uh, wants to do it, it's... Either way, it's a player who is, who is elevating their personal engagement with the game over everyone else's. And while there needs to be a balance, there needs to be a, a sense mm -hmm. of fairness to who gets to act and whose decisions and, and sort of choices uh, affect the course of the game. And ideally, it is a collaborative effort amongst everybody, but there are some times where it's not and someone will, will either not speak up or will sort of you know, they're not treating it that seriously. And so they're just like, ah, screw it. We're tired of doing this thing. We're going to go in here and attack these people. Or I'm just going to keep shopping or talking to these NPCs or whatever. A large part of dealing with that is on the on the uh, Game Master. Because you can say like, hey, just a minute. Like, we're still planning. Are you sure you want to go run in there? Okay, you guys see that your friend's about to bolt. Is there something you would like to do? And in those mm -hmm. situations, I will let players know like, hey, if it comes to it and we've got to like roll against each other, is that you know how, how you want to play this out? Some groups, they're fine with it. Some groups, they don't want to. And most of the time, it's probably a player thing. A player's bored. A player isn't engaged. They want to do something else. Mm -hmm. And they just can't sit still long enough. It's a version of another, uh, the, the next one I was going to make, which is the spotlight card. The yeah. person who needs to be in everything. Yes. Every conflict, every social encounter. You're talking to the guards, you're talking to this, and they're always the one to step forward. Yeah. You know, I mean, a party can have a leader. Yes. Yeah, a party can have a leader. a good leader knows who's good at what. Right. Right? Yeah, and delegates. And, and, and like not that. just leads by leading. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm the leader, so I'm going to talk to the guard. Yeah, I'll do it Your all. charisma's eight. Yeah. Whether or not I would consider myself a spotlight hog or just a spotlight lover. I just love a spotlight <laughs> like, yeah, I just like What I realized I liked to do with this, and I, for a long time I did worry, like, am I a spotlight hog? Is this what I'm doing? I like having a lot of skills. I like having mm -hmm. the option to participate in all pillars of play, if we're thinking about Dungeons & Dragons. Right. And what I kind of realized is that I want to be able to contribute to a scene uh, and and help facilitate someone else's scene. I don't need to be the spotlight in those moments, but I want to contribute. Yeah, it's that I want I want to have a hand. I want to be able to have a voice. Not it doesn't need to be the the dominant one or yeah. or even agreed with. Yeah. You know that the player is free to say no thanks or don't need you. Yeah. And I will I try to extend that to others as well. If I've got something that's going on that I think is more focused on me, and there's some characters in the party that I think like oh they might. That might be an interesting in. Uh, you know, example of this, I'm playing a, a Trollkin Ranger who's uh, in Midgard setting, and they're dark, fey kind of uh, character. Gloomstalker is what I'm going for because I think it's nice and creepy. Like mm -hmm. Baba Yaga is the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, kind of pseudo patron. And, and there's someone in the party, a Shadow Fae. Apart from just sort of the relationship with that player and, and the course of the game, I can see my character wanting to know more about them because of their shared ancestry. Of, of somewhere along the line, my trollkin had someone, a shadow fae, that lived elsewhere and came to this world, and, and now he, there he is. Right, right. And so, like, it's a way of, like, finding and finding something in another player's, uh, you know, character that they've made, their play style, something that you enjoy, and engaging with it and boosting it. And it, that's that's where I, that's largely where I came to with it. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let, let me tell you, uh, not to not to derail into sports ball. Yeah. But John Stockton is in the Hall of Fame for mostly for assists. Sure, you know, assists, he's the yeah. assist leader of all time. So that ain't a bad thing. No. You know, no. Carl Malone's there too. Sure. But you got to pass him the ball sometimes. <laughs> um, look it up, kids. Yeah. And anyway, so if, if you've got, to, it doesn't take. It doesn't, it's not as though that everyone needs to play that way. It, right. That, but if you've got a few people playing that way, one or two can make a world of difference. They can draw in uh, players who are not. Uh, as engaged, they can. They are. They are another set of eyes, another observer, along mm -hmm. with the DMs. So they're like, oh, you know, I bet this character, I bet that player might appreciate it if we did this. 
Good cop, bad cop. They're affirming the other player's fiction. They're building up the bonds of the group and mm -hmm. elevating the group. If we're kind of talking about you know problem play styles, problem behaviors, then we're really talking around what makes a good player, what make what are good behaviors yeah. to have. And I, you know, rules mastery is great. Um, you know, having a great imagination and sharing it is great. But to me, like boosting other players yep. is the number one like what I want out of a, a player at the table. <laughs> Empathy, sympathy, engagement. Yeah. Like those three qualities, I think, if you can have those and then just know some of the rules, everybody's gonna have a great time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, I think this kind of leads also to, to, the, to this next point, yeah. uh, which is one of the most talked about, I think. <laughs> the, but my character would oh, or my character wouldn't, would, yeah. dot, dot, dot. 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 Right. But my character wouldn't run around with these people they just met and go on dangerous missions. But my but character, my character would stab that yeah, person. Would stab them in the back. They would steal from this thing. So my character would is is a I find it a seductive phrase. Yeah. Because yeah, my character would. There's been plenty of times when I have done things in the game that mean I'm gonna enjoy the game less, but I have more satisfaction out of playing to my character's alignment. And, and when I don't, or an alignment in the sense of who their personality is. And Not the, just your any. Right. The deck of many things in your first Spelljammer game. Yeah. Whereas Jim, the dungeon master, like, Shh, deck of many things, like, this is great, like, you know, this shenanigans. But my character would have oh, been like, no, no, to go. no. The no. fact <laughs> that you drew any card. Yeah, it's just shocked. like very uncharacteristic. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of those things where, you know, the, the motivations of the player and the character, are, you know, yeah, start yeah. to diverge and what, what fiction are we, you know, being true to? And there's a lot of high-minded concepts you can think of. But at the end of the day, I felt like I had betrayed my character, that I had gotten caught up in the moment. Heck, deck of many things. Awesome. And, and it had forgotten that I was trying to portray a hyper paranoid, uh, you know, kind very, of spy. Oh, yeah, no, he had a rigid view of the it world. Was a rigid, very rigid view of the world. What made, yeah. made you alive? What yeah. kept you alive and what would get you dead? Yeah, yeah. And only the known quantities. Yeah. I just chalked it up to the fact that everyone else was so excited. And oh, Zila, sure, yeah. you always tried to, to me, you always tried to play Zila where he was trying to see, like, other people's perspective. Oh, sure. Yeah, Maybe yeah. it was He's, just for his own like yeah. personal uh, reinforcement yeah. of like, okay, I can trust them. I think. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. whatever. But you just kind of got caught up in that, and it was yeah, fine. Yeah, I mean, was... where you you um, counterbalance that was y'all's insane uh, uh, signing over of the ships and everything to another party. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that <laughs> y'all researched the deck of many things and had heard, and I was like, all right. And I basically just rolled some tales, some rumors, like you had heard that one person drew a card and lost everything. Like yeah, so their house signed, disappeared. We and signed so the signed ownership of the ship ships over to one of the crew, crew or something else. And like drop Check us off on an asteroid and you left all your good yep. gear and, yep. and, and bequeathed it to someone yep. else. And just like, I was like, all right, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But so it's like, yeah, all of us on an asteroid in the middle of nowhere with an air pocket like, drawing from a deck. Come back in two days and yeah, see come if back we're in still two days. here. Something will happen where you're, you know, there's a mismatch or, yeah. or whatever, and, and yeah, you get over it. Play, yeah, play through it. So next, Jim, I have a, um, I have a collection here. Yeah. Okay. Of of rolling behaviors. Oh yeah. Dice uh, I've shenanigans. engaged in some of the dice shenanigans. Dice shenanigans. So we're gonna we're gonna rapid fire these mostly because I'm I'm very proud of the 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 names that I came up with. But the first one is the rolling off book. Ah. Like when you have that player who literally says, who, who always takes their die and they roll it on their notes or their book and anytime it rolls off and they'll pick it up, oh, rolled off. Rolled off, yeah. And then they roll again and then a couple times later, yeah. they'll roll and it hits a 20. Uh -huh. And they're like, oh, natural 20. Natural and 20. You, everybody else is like, wait a minute. Three rolls ago, it rolled off in a three and yeah. you picked it up and said, oh, off book. <laughs> like that's a double standard, right? Sure. So the next one, of course, is the uh, Schrodinger's book crack. It's just kind of the same thing. It's where you roll into the crack of a book, and like depending on how the die's cocked, if a 20 or a 19 is up, they'll take it. But if it's a 5, no. No, they right? take it. No. And so there's that one. And then no. there's the quicker picker-uppers, <laughs> which is they roll and, oh, that was a 20. You know, or, oh, that was a 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then, of course, the last one is the mother nudger, mother which nudgers. is they roll and just get in there really quick, and you just, they tip that 5 over mm -hmm. to a, a 13. Tip it over. Right? Pick it up real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, I don't know, I thought, I thought of those and had a good that's laugh. That's good, yeah, the um, di dice, what I do. <laughs> dice shenanigans are like, there are times when, when they want to have a dramatic moment and the dice fail them. Mm -hmm. And what they're, you know, in their eyes, like the dice fail them. They deliver a non-desirable uh, you know, result. 
Now, I like those outcomes. I experience the same sort of like, I should have won that thing. I mm -hmm. should have survived that mm -hmm. or, or nailed that save. If that's like an overwhelming impulse at your table, it's like a lot of players are feeling it, then there's ways to handle it. That's where re, you know, allowing a certain number of re-rolls for whatever come in. Mm -hmm. They can take the lucky feet, you know, if, if they're doing something like that. Or you yeah. can give, you know, use like hero points or action points or something right, right. To, to sort of simulate that. Because yeah, a D20 produces flat curve, right? 5% mm -hmm. regenerate. And it's, it can sometimes lead to weird results. And it's the whole reason why other games use different dice systems and, and different dice just gimmicks and things. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you're rolling, you're rolling to see what happens. You're willing to accept the result. Um, it's like just dice fudging is like, there's, an, there's another way. Talk about it. What's going on? Why are they doing this? Right, right. You know. Well, my thing is if you're just relying wholly on fate, then you're going to get what you're going to get. Yeah. Right? But the game does have mechanics, it has options, it has spells, it has everything to try to get you in a better place. Why aren't you role, Why aren't you trying to role play better so that maybe the DM gives you inspiration? Sure. Now you can roll with yeah. advantage yeah. when that big yeah. moment There's happens. There's a lot of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or just or encouraging uh, encouraging more synergy with everyone. So it's like, oh well, you know, you know, hey, hey, cleric, you got a bless. You know, like, like we're about to go into a combat. Right. You got to, like, are we setting everybody up? Is, is, mm -hmm. is this person doing fairy fire? Because we got a lot of, like, got 12 combatants over there and they're all sure. bundled up. Get yeah. advantage on all of it. You know, I mean, like, there are options. There are options. Uh, right. In the game. And I, to me, like, when you have one of those big moments, it's a teaching moment. Like, mm. how can I better prepare myself so I'm not just at the whim of fate? You're saying, like, you're going to use your abilities in a very sort of, like, cooperative manner and make sure everybody's got something that supports the other. You can even sort of, like, approach the situation from a perspective of, can I, as a player, manipulate things so that I don't even have to roll? Right, like, can I arrange things in the game so that someone else takes care of this problem for me? Can I arrange things in the game so that it's not a problem at all? It takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Like, especially when you, like, move beyond the, like, combat as the central focus of a game like D&D &D or traditional fantasy role-playing, and you move, move it more towards, we're just going to explore this imaginary place. There'll be action, there'll be combat, there'll be other stuff, but we're here to just sort of, like, get into trouble and mm -hmm. have an adventure. And like then you get into all kinds of fun things about how to bypass challenges and get get through obstacles and, and, mm -hmm. and overcome foes, and it varies things up, and you have more sort of like interesting and engaging. Uh, play yeah, yeah. Way. So I only have a couple more on my list. Sure. One of them is the peekaboo. You have that person that sits at the edge of the table right next to the DM screen, and they're always like stretching, like. Yeah. Oh, what's back here? What's going yeah. on here? Like we need to go. To, we need to go to the right. If you've got someone peeking at your notes, <laughs> like. That's just like cheating on a. T I mean, like just... <laughs> they've either misunderstood what the point of this whole thing is, they, uh, or, or 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 something. I don't know. Talk to them if you catch them. Also, if you're really worried about it and they just can't seem to help themselves, then you know that's what ciphers and drawing in code and you know like creating a flowchart dungeon or mm -hmm. just writing an utter gibberish. Mm -hmm. You know, writing like uh, Charlie a... from Always Sunny, <laughs> just like pictograms and hieroglyphs for your. Uh... <laughs> DM notes. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing it. Yeah, the the peak the peak they're just hurting themselves and, and you know what if you suspect they're doing it and, and you talk to them and they don't stop or, or whatever and, and you know you don't think it's some of these things are not worth like kicking someone out over. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's some things that you just feel like, oh, I wish you would stop that. I you know it's, yeah, that to me that's mostly just a dude. Right. This is also where I sometimes look back and I go yeah, at one point it would have been acceptable to like have a trap go off, have a wandering monster come by. And like maybe there are situations where if there's an in-game consequence for them, that might be enough for that player. And and I think that like these are like issues about between play styles and DM and player and player and all that stuff. It's so complex that to just be like no, never do X mm -hmm. or always do Y just seems right. Weird, other than always talk, <laughs> you know, and and always treat each other uh, with respect. Like that seems like pretty good absolutes to follow. Yeah, the oh, maximum yeah. web DM, which is don't be a dick. No, nope, last one I have here. Uh, every, everybody's got pet peeves, but sure. what about the players that have pet peeves? <laughs> Ah uh, yeah, uh, if you're one of those players that has a familiar, lots of pets, you like to conjure animals. That can be those are some like procedural things. Like, I, I kind of am a fan of uh, if you've got more than one pet, spread the love. Like you know, let someone else control it uh, in combat. Use average damage. Use a, a, a you know to hit calculator that's not just rolling dice. Mm -hmm. I don't know pre-roll. 80 rolls of dice and just hand them to the DM and feel like these are my animals' rolls for the campaign. <laughs> you know? No, like <laughs> That is an... Because I have done that before, Jim. It's an amazing thing to do. If you have an animal that 
when they attack, they roll a d6, whatever, yeah. roll a d20 and a d6, d20, d6, and yeah. just give that list. Yep. Here's the attack, here's the damage. Yep. If it hits, it does that. If not, oh well, scratch it off, go to the next one. Yep. And that way the DM can just narrate while your wolf runs in and takes a good bite out of them. This is one of those things where players worrying about what other players are doing when the other player is just playing the game. Mm -hmm. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just engaging with the game in their own way. I'm always surprised <laughs> in all the years I've done this. I'm always surprised when I meet a player who's just like livid about something another player's doing and it has no impact on the game. Yeah. You know, I mean, it does on their experience of it. So I guess in that sense it has an impact, but it's not like, oh, they're taking forever to resolve their turn or they are attacking NPCs that we're trying to ally with them. It's just like, no, they've played a character I don't like. It feels like one of those immature uh, reactions to something you don't like. Grow up. You can have a yourself. preference, but that's that's for you. Yeah. Like, that's how you play the game. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, like most things, I think, it's all about just communication and, yeah. you know, just be open and honest with each other. And it, it'll For the most part, it can work itself out. It will solve a lot of problems. It will, it will hopefully, at the very least, make the resolution of those problems less tense and fraught. But also, like these are most of these things have nothing to do with the game. They've got nothing to do with RPGs. Mm -hmm. They got nothing to do with what kind of game you're playing. They have everything to do with what's going on in their, these people's lives. You know, it, it's a personal thing, and these yeah. are interpersonal problems. Again, not mental health professionals, mm -hmm. but um, it, you, there's only so much you can do. Yeah. And if it's if it's a case of the other four of us would like to continue and have a good time, and you, with you in the group, we're unable to do that, you might just have to have a messy, we can't play together anymore yeah. kind of conversation and accept that it's going to be weird and tense and just not pleasant. Like, you know, yeah. but, but hopefully you can work it out. Hopefully, gosh. And the sun will shine tomorrow. Yes. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. WebDM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons. The Web Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, we've got games on Twitch every week, and they're archived on our second YouTube channel, Web DM Plays. Thanks for watching. So, okay, so I roll off the book. No, you need to roll off both times. It needs to roll off both times. Because okay. that's the thing is you roll off the first and like, oh, rolled off. And the second time you roll off, and oh, then, it's an 18. Oh, it's an 18, like, yeah. But, I roll off and pick up. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You roll off and be like, oh, see, that's an 18. And, and, and yeah. so I'm like. Okay, yeah, okay, I, no, you I get what you mean. I rolled, I rolled off the book. Shouldn't roll off the book. Roll on the book. Oh, 18. Well, no, no, no. You roll off the book again. Because okay, the whole roll. joke is like you sometimes pick it sometimes up. Sometimes you pick, pick up, up the dro die when it's a shit roll, and you That's leave right. the die when it rolls off when it's a good roll. Okay, so, all right, I know. Right? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Come on, DM. Let's talk about problem players on web DM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It actually rolled a mat twenty. <laughs> no, it, <did. laughs> it, took, it took everything I had not to go. Oh shit. <laughs>